Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. life, everyone. Uh, my name is Jen. I am your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, we got Brian and Heno. Hey, guys. Howdy. Not always. That's well, <laughs> me, yes. <laughs> always Brian. Always Brian. Yeah. <laughs> we just start calling him that. Always Brian. Right? Always Brian. Yeah. Yeah, certain, but, uh, there's certainly this. If you don't like me on these podcasts, you're listening yeah, to the wrong. You're, you're, you know, you're, tough luck. You're not the happy camera. <laughs> there's no quarter <laughs> given. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, we just, we just it's just hashtag more Brian. Yeah. Hashtag more Brian. <laughs> hashtag always. always. Yeah, I was gonna say hashtag always Brian. You're right. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. Well, you know the rules. Since- oh yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Since we <laughs> well, How here's the doing, thing. Your week? Even if Heno hadn't, or uh, if he had been here last week, I think he's still probably behind enough from you know his uh, silly, oh, silliness true. with running for office or whatever. You know, so oh, all of a sudden, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, that that was the 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 great news from. Two weeks ago was that I went to a council meeting on Monday night and my name was on the what they call the consent uh, agenda, which is like a list of items that they basically just say, you know, they vote on the whole thing at once. Um, And so my name was on there for Parks and Lands Committee and I was uh, appointed to a three year term and. And my first meeting was on Wednesday night, and th- like it didn't have to wait till January. It's like boom, you're, wow. you're on. And we had a huge presentation about a giant annexation that's going on here. Um, the annexation happened, and now they're putting all the plans together. And I happened to be at the planning and zoning meeting from the week before, so I was really aware with what was going on with the pro- project. And here we were giving the initial. It's it's more it's more like. It ultimately ends up in, in council's hands, but they want the, the subcommittees to give their, you know, their okie dokie. I think most of us uh, have seen so, Parks and Rec. We know how these things work. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and, and, uh, it was cool. It was great. It was, it, it was, uh, um, these are great lessons for me because, because I have so many, like, I literally have decades of experience sitting through meetings. And running meetings and that kind of stuff to sit back and just be okay. I'm the new guy. Yeah. You know, that's I, which means I'm not the one to speak first and I'm not the one to take over and start, you know, moving things along. Being the appropriate size. Yep. (laughs) 
Yeah, and yeah. it was like it's like yeah, we were getting way too into the details on stuff, into the you know into the weeds, and it's like, and I'm like, well, it's, you know, and then when when they finally left after the presentation, it was time for us to work on stuff, and and everyone's like, um, it's a uh, almost eight o'clock, and you know, I'm turning into a pumpkin, and I'm like, lightweights, <laughs> <laughs> it's only been two hours, come on, uh, but yeah, I'm really gonna enjoy it because there's I've I've there's there's a lot to be done right now. The mayor has put some things on the on the board to to do, and uh, there's definitely uh, it's one thing to go sit down where where you know things have been in process for a long time, and and you feel like you should be doing something, but there really isn't anything to do. And in this case, it's like you sit down, and you're like, oh, we have things to do. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. You know, right. I can be, the, uh, you know, you can be active then and not feel like an activist. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. You know, like you're making work. So yeah, that was yeah. great. Um, and then last week was, I had a great week in that every day I set a plan for myself. I had something I needed to do and I did it. And it felt so good. It just felt good to to do it. And and I, I wasn't feeling well. And it was like, you know, I was getting home from work and and it's like motivation's at a low. Oh, you know, I was like, okay, I'm not going to the gym. Pick your battles. Yeah. You know, pick it. Look at what's, you know, so it was like, okay, Christmas card night, you know, um, letter to the IRS morning, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> But to just go boom, 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 so that when Thursday came around, my Friday, I literally had nothing I had to do. And it felt so good because I didn't have that thing in the background saying, oh, you, you, you still have to do this. Yeah. No guilt from not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and so when I decided to blow off, you know, we had a, our, my men's group had a business meeting and so I already, I already gave my financials. You know, it's like they can do it without me. It's I don't need to be there. And I was like, and I literally just sat on the couch and watched, you know, caught up on my TV shows. And it felt so good to just that idea of like, okay, I took care of business. And that kind of has given me a really good feeling. And then at the end of the the week, uh, the uh, uh, let's just say the household exploded in um in uh as it's it can sometimes with uh, people that cohabitate with each other <laughs> over sure. life sometimes life lifes us as individuals but it also lifes us as uh, as couples right and it was i i'm it, my win for the week is that i i i just i just love knowing where my you know what? A what size to be? Where my board, my boundaries are? What battles are worth fighting, and what and which ones aren't? Um, it's not about winning or losing. It's about you know doing what's best in you know in our lives. It yeah. doesn't matter whether it's your significant other, a friend of yours that it, you know. But it, it's uh, getting through things and moving into solutions. And all of that, and I really felt like we did that, and and it just makes me love my wife even more that we can do these things. Yeah, you know, it, it's never it's never going to be perfect. It's, it's never going to be easy, but it's always a matter of uh, how you get through it. That's that's important. Well, you're you're um, content. And, you're doing the work, but it's you know, that's it. yeah, it's yeah. And I'm very grateful for all the the people that have helped me get to this point. And, you know, once again, I'm just going to stress the, this, uh, uh, this book that I love, Codependent No More by Melody Beatty. You know, I learned more than I ever have about my relationship with other people that, you know, in reading that book and also, you know, my therapists and, uh, you know, people that are coaches to me in life and, and the people that live their lives and share, share their experiences with me and how they get through things and that, um, it's, the reason that this is a big deal to me is because when I was drinking, I went into disagreements and I went into difficulties with half my brain behind my back. Right. And I bet and it was, it was probably all about winning at that point too, rather than like this. No, time, you're right. 
this time, you know, you said you, you, you pulled back and we're like, this isn't about winning. This is about uh, getting things situated so that, we, so that we can be okay, you know, yeah. versus it's true. Know, the it's need true. to be right, which is on the distorted thinking yeah. worksheet. <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> and that's and and that's that, that's the absolute truth. When I talk uh, about my alcoholism, what it was like and what it was like now, that's one of the differences. You know, it was yeah. before I'd rather be right. Now I'd rather be happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, but before you know, before winning was the ultimate goal, and and here's the other one. And before I was confused when it didn't work out that way, mm-hmm. because I I really didn't know what was going on, and and because I didn't. This there's one thing that that um I've that it gets repeated over and over again in twelve step programs is this idea of like you intuitively know how to handle things that used to baffle you, hmm. and and how it reflects how it it comes to fruition in my life today is when a difficult situation is about to happen or is happening, I literally feel like ever the world goes into slow motion. And I can see the moves five ahead. And that's exactly and that's if any if you're listening and you heard the episode where I was talking about what my therapist gave me a worksheet about when you can recognize something happening, so you can basically put the brakes on and and make a uh, conscious decision at that point rather than just Mah! and going you know bl- yeah. blowing right through it. So that's yeah. that's great. I'm sure therapists, any and therapist the op- listening, will be like, "Sweet." <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the opportunity to take action rather than react is the greatest blessing I've gotten out of doing work on myself, the inside job. Yeah, you know, as I like to call it, and that's what we were talking about this weekend. It's a, it, it is, you know, I, uh, you know, a, a, a good friend of mine uses that term all the time. It's an inside job, and he's right. Yeah. You know, he's absolutely right. It is an inside job. There's nothing on the outside that's going to make, that's going to change anything. Yeah. And to, it's, it's, you know, and yes, I still react. Yes, I still blow up. Well, yes, sure. I still lose my cool. Yep. So when those moments happen where I don't, where I see it, where this little bell goes off in my head and, and I go, oh, I know what's happening right now. This is what I need to do. Yep. Yep. You know, so that this doesn't get worse. Whereas before it was, it was rock'em, sock'em robots for those of you from the seventies. You know, <laughs> chest hit, head pops off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yep. That's it. Yep. That I hear you. was the old me. Yeah. You know, so. And that's the thing. Yeah, like so what you just mentioned is, is what I'm getting into where, you know, with where I'm at, which is I'm catching myself at times having that like, you know, break screech or record scratch moment to where it's like, Oh, you know, like, like, <laughs> all right, well, if I do this, it's probably going to, you know, rock em, sock em robots. If I do this, yeah. you know, and, and <laughs> I'm seeing the ability to kind of reframe to the better path here. Cause like you were saying before, you know, that it, it was about being right rather than being happy. And it's so funny because back in those days, I bet you thought that being right would make you happy, but I bet in the end it didn't because you still had this horrible fight you had to reconcile, you know? And apologies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. How, how right were you and how much did you win when you're apologizing after? <laughs> it doesn't, you know what I mean? It's like when you look at that, it's like, that sounds counterproductive a little bit. It's like, ooh, sorry we dropped a bomb on you. You know, our fault. Like, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. Exactly. That's my, that that's, and, and I enjoyed the show. I listened to it, of course. I, I thought it was a great show. Thank you. Yeah, you guys had some some pretty. Uh, those were some great little topics that came up. I yeah. was like, "Huh," <laughs> <laughs> makes me very happy for my family. <laughs> you want to? Because I don't think I could be around some of those people. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, well, I'll go next. I'll let you go last, Brian. Okay. So, um, so my. My week's been been pretty typical, you know. Um, I've still I'm, I'm still working quite a lot. Um, my husband is also working quite a lot, which is leading to me uh, sleeping an awful lot. <laughs> um, so you know, I've been doing a lot of sleeping. Um, one thing I do want to mention, and this is for the ladies out there, um, 
I know I talked to a couple guys, but um, I think men can even get a little bit out of this. Something very personal. Um, I was um, a few days late this uh, this cycle, and there was a thought of pregnancy that came up, and I shared my my you know, hopes and fears and all that good jazz that comes along with these circumstances with um, some close people, some close friends of mine. And it turned out that I am not pregnant. Um, but first thing that crossed my mind was, oh, my God, how embarrassing that, you know, I thought I could have been and I shared that with someone and they're going to think I'm just overreacting whenever something happens like this and da, da, da. And I started going down that path and I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not going to apologize for my normal natural reactions to these things. You know, when something happens that is could be life altering and you share your fears and concerns, even if it doesn't happen the way that you expect, it's still legitimate to have fears and concerns and express joy and happiness that things in excitement and anticipation. All those feelings are still valid. And I was discounting myself and berating myself for quote unquote overreacting. But no, I think I was reacting how I needed to react. And going back in in getting down on myself and being embarrassed by my reactions does nothing to help me and does nothing to further me along on my mental growth and my in my inner work, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was really kind of a enlightening. Um, it was very enlightening to me when I stopped and I saw how I personally was reacting to myself, if that makes any sense. Yeah. My, my, you know, my self care. Yeah. So, well, again, you're looking at like, again, if someone came to you and said, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm late. I might be pregnant, whatever, you know, you wouldn't be like, Oh, stop it. You know, and like the way you kind of like stop it, this isn't about whatever and just turned it on its side. And again, like we've said plenty of times on here, it's, it's amazing how we won't treat ourselves the way we would treat others. We don't give ourselves Mm -hmm. the breaks that we give others to where like, if a friend of yours did that and then called you a few days later and said, Hey, you know, no, it's, it's yeah, yeah. False alarm. They'd be like, Oh, okay. You know, like, no one's going to be like, I can't believe you wasted my time. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So exactly. it's, yeah. So it was just yet another kind of a reminder to myself. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to spend my time in embarrassment in being upset with myself or anything like that. It is what it is. My re- emotions are in my emotions. My reactions are my reactions. And, It's okay. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to make mis, you know, to, you know, not necessarily even make a mistake because you were working off of the information that you have at the time. So it's basically, it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to, to err. Yeah. And people will forgive you much easier than you forgive yourself. Yeah. So, and that's, so that was kind of my life lesson for the week. And kind of, um, so, you know, obviously very personal, but I think it was important, important lesson that I wanted to make sure I shared with everyone. Um, so maybe someone else can, can kind of take from it a little bit too. So, but other than that, I've been gearing up for Christmas mm-hmm. and, uh, and getting my house in order. My brother's coming for a long weekend. Um, so he will be here Friday through uh, leaving Tuesday morning, so which be very exciting. I love having him in town, and uh, got a lot of lot of parties and stuff to look forward to, and a lot of making sure I do my self care, use yep. my tools, make sure I don't overindulge in anything, you know, right. imbibe in alcohol and, and or food. Because neither one benefits me in the end. <laughs> so, 
you know, um, and definitely make sure that I do the best I can to set myself up for an enjoyable time throughout the holiday season. Yeah. So a lot of that to look forward to this week. Yep. Nice. yep. Yeah. How about you, Brian? Uh, it's been, <laughs> today was a little weird. You know, I got up today and, uh, our refrigerator had quit working. Uh, our freezer mm-hmm. still works. We have a side by side, uh, refrigerator and you know that it stopped working and um you know it's funny because the the first thing going through my head was you know like what can i do to fix this you know what can i do to make you know to help here and you know i i'm not handy at all i don't do this kind of stuff so um so (laughs) but i jumped on google to see if there's maybe something that's a, a simple fix you know that i would feel more comfortable doing or something and it didn't look like it um, but you know, and I hated it because, you know, like, a, it, it was, it had really, really upset my mom because she's, you know, trying to figure out how she's going to buy a new refrigerator because it's not like they're cheap, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, some things worked out and, uh, it looks like, you know, things will be okay. We, you know, kind of got something straight or figured out. Um, but it's, it, and it's funny because or not funny, but she, you know, was really overwhelmed when, you know, we, when somebody offered to help basically. And, uh, you know, because she's prided herself on, you know, doing things herself and, uh, you know, which is something that, you know, I've always done too, but, you know, over the last bit of time, you know, the last, what, five ish years, six years, whatever is that I've learned, how important it is to ask for help. It's hard for a lot of people to do because of pride, ego, however you want to word it. Um, or they were brought up that, you know, ah, pull yourself up from your bootstraps, you know, uh, you know, it ain't how many times mm-hmm. you get knocked down. It's how many times you get back, uh, all that kind of garbage. And it's like, yeah, no, you know, sometimes if you get knocked down, you know, yeah, you could pick yourself up, but it doesn't hurt if someone offers you a hand up. You know, and like, like here, let me help you get to your feet. Um, but it is amazing. I, you know, like I said, I know I've, I've been this way the longest time. Like I never wanted to borrow from people. I never wanted to, you know, owe anybody money, you know, type of thing or whatever. If somebody would buy me lunch, I'd immediately be like, you know, like, Hey, we need to have lunch again. Cause I'd want to even it out essentially. So. You know, it was nice to see. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad we're going to be able to have it, you know, get another refrigerator. And, uh, you know, it, it's, I kind of went over that with my mom about how, you know, it's like, even though you, you know, you're not really asking other people for help when somebody offers that help, you know, it's like, like we've talked before, it's like they did it because they felt it was the thing to do. You know, they felt it was right. Um, and by you accepting that, you make them feel helpful, you know, as though because they see you struggling and they're like, hey, look, I'm in a situation where I can help you. Let me help you type mm-hmm. of a thing. So um, and I know, you know, I say it every week about, uh, you know, the the info about like the, the suicide hotline numbers and everything. But I kind of want to just throw it in here a little bit with, the, uh, you know, again, I know asking for help is tough. Um, I know a lot of people this time of year, myself included, this is a really hard time of year. Um, I, you know, I, I know a lot of times people have this throughout the year, but, um, you know, so again, uh, if you need help, please seek help. There's information all over the internet. There's some on our Facebook page, whatever. Um, if you have a friend who suffers from depression or lost a loved one somewhere around this time of year or recently, to where they might be hurting extra this year because they lost somebody, you know, reach out to them and see if you can, you know, be a comfort to them as well. If you can. Um, so having said my PSA there, uh, <laughs> um, other than that, it's, I, I'm pretty much, pretty much the, the same as, you know, you, except I don't have all the parties to go to, <laughs> uh, but we're hosting uh, my family's Christmas Eve get together. So, you know, I, I went to the grocery store yesterday, which was a nightmare. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, what's funny is with, with my anxiety, 
Um, and going into stores like that and stuff now, it's like, oh man, I, I'm really appreciating the stores that offer the, like, where you can go online, do your order and just go pick it up basically. That's um, what I do. And that, <laughs> and I honestly, when, after yesterday, I'm like, I got to start doing this. Like this is, because honestly, if I had my druthers, I would just go in the middle of the night because there's mm-hmm. nobody there, you know, in the store, we got a couple of stores here, 24 hours. So I could go at three in the morning. There's no one except employees were, you know, in there. So, uh, you can just, you know, walk up and down mm-hmm. aisles unimpeded for the most part. Um, but you know, with me not driving, that doesn't always work out so well. So, <laughs> uh, is that most people don't want to take me to the grocery store at three in the morning. So, uh, um, you know, but, uh, man, it was, uh, it's funny cause you know, I go to the store, I'm irritated the whole time I'm in there, I get home, you know, we unload the vehicle and get inside and I could just feel, uh, I don't, I don't know how to, the best word I can use for it was that almo- I was almost seething <laughs> with anger. Yeah. I mean, I was just like inside and there's not really a reason for it. Um, you know, like I wasn't, uh, nobody did anything really terrible to me at the store other than just, you know, the common, like not looking where people are going or blocking places, you know, the, just the normal stuff people do. Um, I don't know why I was just so like, I was done, you know, like if I had to stay in a store 10 more minutes, I probably would have just been like, nope. And walked out. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, it, it's just weird. And I don't know if it's uh, like I said, I, I, you know, I, I, my depression's been worse lately, but I know why, you know, it's this time of year, especially as it gets close to Christmas, it's, you know, like I've said before, you know, after losing my dad, Christmas just doesn't feel like Christmas to me anymore. When the family's together, there's, there's a hole, you know, there, there's a gap and that's never going to be filled. So it's hard to go through that every year. Um, so yeah, that's, I haven't really done anything this week. I was trying to think of it. I, I've, Mm -hmm. I've been trying to use my, uh, drawing tablet to try to get used to it. And I'm still just stinking on ice with it. Like I, I'm still terrible. So I, like I said, I don't know if I'll ever get used to this thing. Um, and it's funny cause as I say that, I, I, I feel like I'm the, you know, ah, these kids and their new fangled toys, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's yeah. like, I, 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 you know, I could do stuff like on my iPad and stuff like that, you know, like drawing or whatever, but it's like, it's not the same. I want to do it on a, you know, bigger scale. So, uh, it's, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's frustrating though, because I, I've always generally adapted to technology well, you know, because of the generation we are, it's, you know, we've had electronics pretty much since we were little kids, you know, mm-hmm. so it's, it, but I don't know why I'm just so flabbergasted by this, <laughs> this, you know, uh, I don't know, <laughs> eight, eight by, single contraption. yeah, eight, eight by 10, uh, drawing tablet or whatever it is, you know. <laughs> I feel like part of it is just like, you know, the, um, Saturday night live sketch, the frozen caveman lawyer, you know, like, huh. like, like your, your technology frightens and confuses me. Uh, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's the, I think it's the first time technology has, has made me feel like I'm out of place, you know, because mm-hmm. most of it's either like, ah, eh, that's ridiculous stuff or, oh, that's cool. I'll embrace that, you know? <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I, I got, um, I got a, uh, Secret Santa gift, a uh, group I'm in online, uh, we did a Secret Santa, and I got a gift from that last week, which was really cool. Um, and <laughs> actually, you know what, I'm gonna tell the story on here, because it, it, it's, goes back to the, the temper kind of thing we talked about. Um, it's this thing called a man crate. And, uh, basically, it's a wooden crate that shows up in an outer box, right? You open the outside box on the inside. There's a little, uh, crowbar and basically a card that says, good luck. And I'm looking at this going, what? You know, so I get the, the crate out of the box and I start looking around cause you know, where, where I can put the crowbar in there. And I'm like, well, there's not really a front on this or a top. Well, there was a top cause there's a logo thing on the bottom, but, uh, I'm like, huh? So I start looking around the edges and there's no opening to put the crowbar in. And I'm just like, 
okay, you know, and then it kind of hit me. It's like, oh, okay, I get it now. The point of this is that I have to figure a way into it. So I jumped online really quick because I wanted to make sure I was right in that, you know, I, plus I was very was afraid. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I watched a guy do a, <laughs> do, uh, his and what worked for him did not work on mine. So it was interesting that that's, there's, I don't know that there's a real tip for it. And if there is, I'm not sharing it. You have to figure it out yourself. So, um, <laughs> but well, no, because originally I was like, this is going to be frustrating. You know, like I am going to be mad, you know, I'm going to try for 10 minutes and want to just wing this thing at the wall, you know, but it was funny because my mind kind of flipped it pretty quickly and it was like, you know what? This is a puzzle. That's all this is. I have to be smarter than a wooden crate. (laughs) So, so I kept turning it and looking and looking. And I finally, I saw this little spot, you know, where I thought I could get the crowbar and once I did that, it was, I, I figured it out. And, uh, you know, once I got the one thing off, it was, you know, getting the, the top off or whatever the thing was basically like, um, opening a paint can, you know, where you just go ah. all around it and it pop it off. Okay. So, uh, but on the inside was like a bunch of beef jerky and, uh, like six bags of beef jerky, um, almonds, corn nuts, a uh, couple energy bars, you know, I was like, oh, this is, this is awesome. You know, I like most of the <laughs> stuff in there. Um, so, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of cool, you know, it was nice to get a gift, uh, from somebody that didn't have to get me anything. Like the parameters of the secret Santa are, you can do whatever you want. Like you could just post a thing on Twitter that says, Hey, Merry Christmas. I'm your secret Santa up to whatever you want to do. So, you know, it was really cool that somebody, you know, was like, Hey, I'm going to spend this money and, you know, give him this experience. Yeah. So that's cool. But uh, like uh, the main part for this podcast is more the, um, (laughs) <laughs> how quickly framing. yeah how quickly what i thought was going to be rage <laughs> <laughs> actually turned into all right i am not going to get bested you know it's like it's bad enough this drawing tablet's besting me i'm not going to let a piece of you know a box of wood also best me because then what what hope do i have it, you know if a wooden crate and technology both betray me, I'm like, I'm just give up. That's now, it. I, I can't handle basic <laughs> or technical stuff. So yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was really cool. It was kind of fun to do, you know, and especially after I was done with it, looking back, I was like, yeah, that was kind of fun to do, you know? Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, that was, and there that's, yeah, that's the end of my week stuff. <laughs> that's awesome. <clears throat> Yeah, it was fun. that's cool. That's very cool. So now you have the article for this week, correct? Yep. Uh, this one came from uh, the Huffington Post, so I hope it's not pun laden. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's called. They like to be punny. Yeah, they, oh, they do. They do. Um, it's called Eleven Brilliant Ways Therapists Control Their Holiday Stress. I picked this one because, you know, this show is going to drop, uh, uh, just about a week. Well, it'll be a week when we post it a week before Christmas. So, uh, you know, we figured this would be, you know, maybe something in here somebody can use for their Christmas parties this week or, or, uh, whatever, just to help them get through the time. Or maybe because you work retail. Ugh, I feel bad for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the, um, I'm just going to do the talking points here. Um, um, the first one is set aside a few minutes to meditate. A lot of these we've probably talked about before, but you know, just, just a refresher on some of them. I mean, you know, setting aside a few minutes to man, yeah, meditate, meditate. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. but, um. and that even works, you know, even during the, the festivities or something, if you feel yourself going one way or another too far, you know, whether you're getting too hyper or, or to down or you whatever. If you need a minute, take five minutes to step outside, get a breath of fresh air, mm-hmm. meditate, find a quiet, you know, quiet hole, go to your car for a few minutes. Yeah. Or, you know, take or your time. if you're a guided meditation person, you know, we've talked before on here, there's a ton of apps available to, for guided meditation also, if, if mm-hmm. that's what you need. Um, or that'll, uh, play, um, something that's calming, basically, you know, uh, music or whatever that's more calming so you can, 
you know, clear your head a little bit. Uh, Let's see what we got here. The second one is tell yourself it's okay to take a break from family. This is one I use a lot. Uh, because a lot of times it is, and it isn't that my family's like terrible. It's that, um, there's just a constant noise at these kind of things. And eventually I, I just, it's a sensory overload. So I have to like, I'll just go outside for a minute, you know, or a few minutes and, and just let the, just nothingness, you know, uh, be the only thing I'm listening to. And then I'm able to go back in. Because otherwise, I hit a point <clears throat> where my anxiety starts really ramping up from that point. Um, mm-hmm. Because basically, it's like a raw nerve at that point, and then I'm just I get frustrated really fast. So knowing that, you know, when I start to feel myself getting a little crazy, it's like, all right, time to go outside or go in my room for a minute. Basically, what you know, the first tip was, you know, so exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's one where. We, uh, we did the, it was a Thanksgiving, tons of people were supposed to stay at, at my, uh, brother and sister's house, but there's still tons of people over there and Sharon wasn't feeling well. And it's like, um, yeah, we're going to go to a hotel room yeah. mm-hmm. and, and it wasn't that, you know, it's not, not, no reflection on you. Just this, this is where we're going to be comfortable, blah, blah, blah. And just was straight up with my family, but I totally understood. Nobody had an issue with it. Right. And it was funny when we got there, how many other people had the same idea. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it makes sense. You know, it's, we used to do that a lot when, uh, we would go, uh, to West Virginia for my family's, uh, family reunion. You know, uh, we, I, I have a big family, so there's plenty of places to stay, but my dad was always like, no, we're going to get a room. He's like, that way, you know, we can come and go as we please. We won't disrupt anybody. And they're like, oh, you know, about, and he's like, no, this makes us feel more comfortable, you know, like we'll, we'll come over, we'll have lunch, whatever, but you know, we just, we'd like to have our own room. And it's funny because when I was a kid, I was kind of like, oh, what's the big deal? But I grew to appreciate it because, You know, you do need that break uh, because the, the times where I've had just like that constant family thing, the part of it that I cherish the most, honestly, was that when I get that first breath of quiet, you know, like when you walk into a room and you're like, ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> um, like even after my dad died, I, I had to keep doing that. I had to keep going into the basement just to, you know, cause it, it was just a, you know, surreal moment, obviously, but <clears throat> same idea. So if, uh, you know, whatever it is you're, you're dealing with, um, sometimes like Janet already said, you know, if, it, if you have to go sit in your car for a minute, uh, if somebody in the family, you know, like I, what I do a lot of times is if somebody smokes, I'll just walk out there with them. That way it doesn't look weird. No one's like, are you okay? They're just like, Oh, what are you doing? Like, ah, I figure I'd come out here and keep you company, you know? And with one person, it doesn't, you know, uh, frazzle me. You know, <clears throat> with 25 people or 30 people, it's like, ah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just, make sure you enlist your support system. Yeah. You know, at these family functions, usually there's probably somebody that you can um, rely on to be your buddy. You know, you can kind of just tell them if you need to take a, a few minutes away and you think that you may people may notice, just tell your buddy, just, you know, hey, I, I just need to. Take mm-hmm. a couple minutes just to get my head together and stuff. I'll be right back. Cover for me. You know, yeah. that type of stuff. Yeah. Use those people because, you know, you they're there to help you and be your support. That's why they're called your support system. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yep. utilize them. If they are, you know, they can throw a smoke screen for you so you can duck out the back for a few minutes. Yeah. Let them. Yeah. Um. The, the next one here is a good one too. And it's funny because I hadn't given it a lot of consideration until last year. And I kind of noticed it last year a little bit. Uh, but number three is spend time unplugged. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to read the th- blurb here. It says, uh, because of electronics, email, patient portals, access to paging, it is important that somehow clinicians turn off some of the electronics and sign out so they can really have some time away. Easier said than done though. From uh, Michelle Reba, uh, associate director at the University of Michigan Depression Center. Um, I noticed that last year actually was, um, you know, as we're with all that noise and everything, and then I, I kept checking my phone, and I, you know, various ones of us were doing that. 
until, you know, basically my sister was like, look, she's like, every time I look at people, their, their faces in the phone, you know, <laughs> she's like, we're <laughs> supposed to be spending time as a family here, you know? So, you know, we all put our phones away except my brother, cause there was a football game on we wanted to watch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, we couldn't get it on the TV. So everybody was like, okay, well, we'll allow that basically. Um, but it was, it was really interesting because, you know, it's, you realize how much more you engage people, (laughs) you know, when you, uh, put these things down. Um, you know, so, so if you can, you know, stay up. Now I will say this. We've talked before about how your phone can help your anxiety. So, you know, if you are having anxiety and you need, again, you know, a, a meditation app or something like that, then yeah, use that. But, you know, try to stay off of, you know, Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and all that kind of stuff while, you know, while you're with your family. Um, you know, you could all it's that so stuff hard because there's there. so much downtime when you're with your family. There really you know? is though. Yeah. 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 You know, but that, that, it, it, and I have to kind of remind myself of that when, usually it's when I'm, when I'm home for Thanksgiving, because there's these periods where you're just kind of waiting for stuff to happen. Yeah. You know, and then it's like, all right, where's the, and this kind of also goes with the whole, uh, you know, that, the, the, the taking time out kind of thing is like, you know, I've had experiences where I've gotten into town and it's like, okay, before we go rushing into the family's house, let's have some downtime. Yeah. Let's have some, you know, some me time. And I've even done it on vacations where yep. me and my dad were flying in to spend a week with family and he said, let's spend one night in a hotel, just the two of us. Yeah. And that, you know, and that enabled you to, you know, I mean, at that time we weren't doing social media like we are today, but the whole idea is it allows you to do the things that you might want to do the next day. And then you can just focus on the next day. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if you just rest on that day, you know, sometimes that's what you need, you know, after you've traveled, whether it's driving or flying or whatever, you know, sometimes yeah. you get to a place and you don't want to immediately run into, oh, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's, you know, it's like, I need, well, a great example, yep. our Chicago trip. You know, by yep. the time yep. we got there, we went into a noisy bar and I was like, I can't do this, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it was because we had been in the car that long. It wasn't that really anyone had irritated me. It's just, I was already, you know, really for me, the best thing would have been to go to the room, probably, you know, sit for an hour and then I would have been great, you know? Um, but you know, whatever we, we worked that out. So, uh, you know, it, it, it is, you know, it, 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 a good part of this is, is to, to put this stuff away. But yeah, that's a great point. Hanno. is that not just unplugged as in from your phone, but maybe also from the environment for, you know, before the, <laughs> the calm before the storm, basically, you know? Uh, yeah, and then you can do, then you can do it. Then you can be like, okay, I'm gonna. The other the other good one is just to not have it with you. Yeah, it's amazing how easy that really is. Yeah, <laughs> it is funny how yeah. hard it is for some people, though. <laughs> you yeah, know, it, it is. And I don't mean like, oh, I'm going to the bathroom, mm-hmm. so I'm taking my phone. As in, you don't want to leave your phone out for people to just root through or something. No. Um but it's just like even around the house. Have you ever noticed like you're going from one room to another and you're like, oh, I gotta grab my phone. It's like, why? Oh yeah. Like I'm going in there to grab, you know, whatever. Why do I need, you know, yeah. So it's, it's amazing. I catch myself doing that all the time. Last night I made a pizza, right? And when it was done, I went to go get it and I was like, oh, and I immediately reached back to get my phone. I'm like, why do I need my phone? I'm going to take a pizza out of the oven. You know, like <laughs> I'm coming back here also, you know, to the same room. So, yeah, I've been catching myself doing that a little more. And it's like, I, you know, like I'm not even going to look at it out there. It doesn't have to be on my person for, you know, for me to feel okay, you know. In public, it's a little different because you don't want to, like, lose your phone, you know. Because mm-hmm. obviously then there could be privacy concerns and such. But, you know, mm-hmm. in your own house. Well, some people would lose it around their house, I guess. But <laughs> I'm generally not one of those kind of people. All right. So, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the next one, and oh my god, this, this is the one you talk about hard for a lot of people, more so probably than the phone, is let go of perfection. Mmm, that's a tough so one for me. So many people who are hosting have problems with this. <laughs> you know, they want everything just right, and they, they don't realize that the people coming don't care. Most of the time. And if they do, they're going to be one voice out of like 30 or whatever, you know? 
my big thing is being perfect in social situations. Yeah. So I need to, to be, you know, be completely on. I need to be entertaining and, you know, and, and pleasant and everyone has to enjoy every moment that they spend with me. And now that I have all these expectations I put up for myself. Sorry, I'm laughing to myself because as you're describing this, I'm thinking of, um, um, like Whoville from The Grinch. And yes. how when they have their Christmas celebration, everything has <laughs> got to be perfect, you know? <laughs> yes. You know, and that's in afterwards, if I don't live up to this expectation I set for myself, yeah. then I get down on myself later about it. And it stinks because it ruins whatever enjoyment that yeah. I could possibly have at these parties. Yeah. And this enjoyment that I have with my family that I don't get to see very often often is underscored scored by this negative behavior, this negative thoughts that I, that I submit myself to. Right. So I mean, granted the medicine helps with all of that and stuff. So it's not nearly what it used to be, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, again, it's, it's that negative self-talk that you got to keep it to the curb. You don't have to be a perfectionist. You don't have to be perfect. It's Okay. Well, that's the thing, too, is it's like unless you were to do something that's like offensive or something, most people are probably going to talk to a bunch of people that night and probably won't, they, you know, probably won't even remember that you were awkward or whatever, you know, or if they do, it's, you know, they're probably not going to say much about it. So it's Mm -hmm. like we were saying early or early in the podcast, you know, it's a, you know, give yourself that break because if somebody came up to you to talk to you, and they didn't say all the right things, you know, I, I can't imagine most people would leave going, can you believe what they said to me? You know, when there was nothing offensive, it was just small talk or whatever, mm-hmm. asking me about the weather, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, did you tell her, her voice was a little high pitched. She was a little overexcited. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Stupid so, stuff like that. It's like, uh, um, hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's nobody acts that way. <laughs> right. Exactly. So it's like, give, you know, again, give yourself the break. You would give other people, you know, you wouldn't pay a lot of attention most of the time to somebody else. You know, like I said, unless they did something offensive or something, then yeah, sure. You know, whoa. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, number five is plan ahead. Uh, and this is, you know, uh, this is a, what causes a lot of people stress. Um, you know, I, I was talking with a friend, um, th- a few weeks ago and we were talking about Christmas shopping and she's like, I don't understand why people wait so long to start. You know, she's like, usually by December 1st, I'm pretty much done. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> she's like, then the rest of the time I can decorate and go to parties. And she's like, I don't have a care in the world basically because I've already got the stressful part done. You know, when it wasn't stressful, you know, if you're doing your shopping in early November, Stores aren't bad. There's plenty of stock on things. The sales may not be as good, but you know, it's the, there's all the things basically. And then I kind of, and I understand that, you know, like my, my, my mom, we're again, we're having our, my family over like today is Sunday. We're having my family over next Sunday, but today she was like, Oh, I got to vacuum the carpet tomorrow. And I'm like, you got a week, you know? And she's like, I hmm. want it. I want it out of the way. I was like, eh, I get that. Okay. <laughs> you know? Um, whereas me, I'd be like, eh, I'll wait till Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When are they coming over six? Yeah. About five 30. I'll get that done. <laughs> um, but then you're running around like, you know, a chicken with your head cut off trying to get something done. So, you know, this, this causes people a lot of stress. You know, you can just see it in people, you know, mm-hmm. especially if you go to stores this, like this coming week, you know, usually if you go into stores, they're, they're nightmarish because it's the people freaking out because they've got to take what's left on the shelf, <laughs> you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. yeah. The first options are always gone. So then you have to like look at option B or option C and you're like, yeah. Yep. Can't get that turbo man for your kids. So you got to get something else. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this year it's fingerlings. I don't know. Yeah. That's what I've heard. My, my brother was at Toys R Us a couple of days ago and I guess they got some in. And he's like, yeah, people were grabbing like handfuls and they're like, oh yeah, one per person. He's like, and people were just like, oh, come on. And I was like, yeah, I imagine if you have multiple kids or you're selling on eBay, um, this, you know, (laughs) yeah. But if you're, if you have multiple kids though, I could see where that would really stink, you know, cause you're like, I got, 
three kids. They all want this. I can't get one for each of them. But, mm-hmm. you know, there you go. That's why you buy one, go out to the car, turn around. Yeah. Go back, <laughs> right. one. It sucks, but mm-hmm. you do what you got to do. False mustache or just hold your finger, you know, over your lip. <laughs> right. <laughs> Weren't you just in uh, here? No. <laughs> That's why I always tend to take disguises with me, you know, when I go somewhere. You never yeah. know. That's how I get around these limits, you know. Silly, silly. Yeah. I, that, I mean, that's a, that's the thing too. Like if you plan to head to try to get these fingerlings, they were gone. Like every time they hit the stores are gone, you know, so mm-hmm. you would be running around like crazy trying to find one and probably not unless you want to spend too yeah. much money on them on eBay or something, you know? Right. So, and unfortunately and this, that causes a lot of stress for people in the holidays. Yeah. And it's one of these things that we're, we're so used to doing it, you know, like we, we literally live in this kind of role yeah. of, you know, last minute, blah, blah, blah. It's just, we start to recognize it as actually part of the experience yeah. Until one year you don't do it. And then you realize, oh, wow, that was so much more relaxing. Wow, everything <laughs> seems different this year. Like, yeah. huh, I, I wonder what, oh. So <laughs> yeah. You know, or, or you know, for, for some people, and I think I can include myself in this, where, where I didn't even know if I, how to enjoy it because I was so not doing it like usual. Like, wait, usually I'm still at the store, rush, trying to rush home. And it's, but it's just one of those things you got to try it differently and then you'll see whether you like that it that way or you know, like I always say, you can go back to your miserable existence yeah, <laughs> you can totally get your right. refund on misery anytime you want Yep, <laughs> and stress. <laughs> well, and, you know, and that's the, this time of year, it's really, you know, like I said, some of the stuff you can do ahead. Some of it, you know, is a little different. Like, again, I was at the grocery store yesterday. I was buying, you know, paper plates and plasticware and the things we're going to need for the the family get-together, you know. That way we don't have to run out Wednesday or Thursday, you know, to, to get these things. It's already done. We've, you know, that's we don't have to worry about it. We just checked it off the list already. You know, and, uh, it, it's, it is funny though. I don't know how many times, you know, you see people, like even when you show up at something, when someone else is having it and they're still running around the house and you're like, what is going on? Oh, I got this and this and that. And you're like, why? You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> or why did you wait so long to do that? You know? So like, mm-hmm. why don't you have your tree up yet? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, silly. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Sorry, they had a gif underneath the uh, plan ahead one that's from Elf when he's talking about what he's going to do with uh, uh, his dad. When he's like, first we'll make snow angels for two hours and yeah. then we'll go ice skating and then we'll eat a whole roll of Toll House cookie dough as fast as we can and then to finish we'll snuggle. Uh, man, that's, yeah. Uh, number six, pay attention to the signs you might be stressed. This is a good tip for any time. I mean, most of these actually are, but, uh, you know, like me, I, I, I know, I can feel when I'm hitting my limit or I'm getting close. So I, you know, and I'm very aware of that now. Yeah. You know, so if I start getting near that, I'm just like, okay, something needs to change or meltdown is coming. So <laughs> again, enlist your, you know, your support system. If you got your support people around you, enlist them. You feel like you're getting close to that to that point. Mm-hmm. Pull one aside and say, "Okay, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna need to tap out for a few minutes." Right. Well, it says in here uh, the the blurb they have here is: I pay attention to when I begin snapping at the children or my husband, have trouble sleeping, or if I become overwhelmed. Overwhelmed is the feeling I usually have. Uh, yeah. And when she continues with, I proactively take time to figure out what I need to outsource. There's a psych Jennifer Gentile's psychologist at telemedicine app live health online. Cause keep in mind, if you're getting to that point where you're snapping at people, that's ruining their moments as well. Yeah. So by you sticking around in that situation, you're not making anything better. Well, you're making things worse. If they would just do things right the first time, I wouldn't have to get upset. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 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 uh, 
not everyone can be <laughs> up to our standards. Uh, yeah, I just say it because it cracks yeah. me up. Um, it's true. It's true, though. Yeah. That's, that's pretty typical of the situation. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the reasons my husband does not like Christmas is because he grew up Wonderful mother, wonderful parents, love them both dearly, but his mother likes, you know, the tree a certain way and the house oh, a certain yeah. way. And, you know, she had four boys and it's difficult when you're a young boy or young kid, you know, boy or girl to adhere to the standards that your parents set before you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Or yeah. Cause a lot of times you'll also just be like, you know, I need to rebel from this and yeah. Yeah. Cause everything, you know, you must act a certain way. You must dress a certain way that, you know, everything has to be just right. Right. Exactly. All right. Let's see what we got next here. Uh, number seven is be realistic about what you can accomplish. Again, we've talked mm-hmm. about this one before with like to-do lists or Hanna was just talking about it this week. You know, instead of at the beginning of the week laying out 20 things he needs done by the end of the week, you know, he assigned himself a task each day and got, you know, went after it. So, you know, that's, and this time of year, you know, again, this, there's a lot of, uh, the outsourcing thing that the previous one mentioned is very important here too. A lot of times people will, oh, they're not going to do it right. I'll do it myself kind of thing which is obviously a control issue. And, and again, as we've said, I don't know how many times on here, you know, letting go is so freeing, (laughs) you know, so trust other people to do things, you know, and worst case scenario, if something doesn't go right when they do it, you can blame them. No, I'm kidding. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Different doesn't mean wrong. (laughs) Um, but, you know, like, seriously, outsource stuff to other people. There, Because mm-hmm. a lot of people want to help, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it was last year we, we had the Christmas Eve get-together. And uh, we didn't have the chairs set up yet when people got here, you know, folding chairs. And, um, you know, different people were like, can we help with the chairs? You know, and we're all like, nah, nah, we got it. And it's like, we have other things to do. We could have been like, yes, please set up ten chairs or whatever, you know. This is, mm-hmm. this is not a difficult task. So the failure rate on it's probably low, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> as well as the fact that it's like, well, that's one less thing I have to do. Now I can go do something else, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. and we have this thing about not wanting to put someone out, you know, not wanting to, to impose upon them in any way, shape or form if they're a guest in our house, but little do again, It's one of those things, the games that we play on ourselves Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. people, like you said, want to be of service. They wouldn't offer if they didn't mean it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I I had people, you know, basically begging to do manual labor and I'm like, nah, I got it. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and that's, in in fact, we may be making them feel, um, uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, because they're sitting there watching us run around like yeah. crazy people. Well, have, you, have you ever got? Yeah, it's like if you get to a party early, you know, like you're the yeah. first one at a party, and the person is literally running around doing this, this. And you're like, can I help you with anything? No, no, no. You just, you know, get a drink, have something, you know, has and start, you know, whatever. And you're like, there's no one for me to talk to. There's nothing for me to do. I'm not going to eat yet. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm kind of just sitting here. I could be helping you. And instead, the you know, we'd all just pretty much run around like an idiot. <laughs> so, it's like that. Take that. Take the moment to yeah. step back in from the situation and say, "Okay, yeah, you know, what what are we really doing here?" <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, can you put you know chips in a bowl? Can you pour the punch into the punch bowl? Whatever you know, just mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So um, yeah, it's uh, that's uh, that's a good tip too. That's that's one that. Uh, Again, it's another thing, like you see people getting really stressed over because they've taken on too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of times that also, (laughs) people who like to play martyr will leap at this kind of thing because it allows them to, well, I had to do everything, (laughs) you know? And so, um, that's part of the reason why I generally will offer to help because then if they try that, I, you know, you kind of have that. I offered to help, you know. 
<laughs> so, uh, yeah. Hopefully no one listening has to deal with people that want to make themselves a martyr, but I know everyone who's listening knows somebody who does. Yeah. <laughs> might even be you. There's always one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, might. <laughs> it likely is. <laughs> We've all done it, so it's, you know, mm-hmm. whether we meant to or not. Uh, the next one is make time for your regular routines. This is really a uh, great point because a lot of people do get really far outside of their routines this time of year. And humans are creatures of habit. We like to do the same thing. We don't like to change. And now all of a sudden everything we're doing is different and it's stressful. And, you know, maybe you just need to, uh, you know, sit on the couch and watch TV. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, yep. That's okay. Yeah. Exactly. Or whatever it is you need to do that you normally do, you know, play video mm-hmm. games or, uh, I don't know, whatever, you know. A big one is get your sleep. Yes. A lot of times the last thing we want to do is we got all these chores we got to get done and we're pushing and pushing and pushing and rushing and rushing and rushing. And when it comes time for bed, we either can't sleep mm-hmm. because we're over really hyped because we've been running around like mad crazy people or the second we go to bed so late we don't give ourselves enough time to sleep and then you're exhausted the next day and you're pushing yourself extra hard so make sure you your sleep routine is incredibly important make sure if you part of your sleep routine is an hour before bed you watch your favorite tv show then you read a little bit of your book then you go to sleep Keep doing that because that will ensure that you get a good night's sleep and you're well rested to be able to take on the next day. Yeah, we've talked about sleep routine on here before. How you know it is really important a lot of times to get into a routine for that because then as you start it, your body will go, "Oh, it's time to go to sleep." Uh, you know, so you'll start. You know, your your brain will start processing it that way. And you're right. It's like I I always use um like our phones as an example when you think about like your sleep and stuff cuz it's like if you only charge your phone to 30% each day, it's going to, you know, it's probably going to die before, you know, and it's the same with us. If we only charge ourselves to 30%, we're not going to be very good all day. You know, we're going to have a good run till about 2 or so and then <laughs> you know. <laughs> So it's a great analogy, you know, and that yes. it really is. Yeah. And, and like you said, you know, if you're, um, you know, staying up too late or whatever, it's like a uh, picture, you know, again, waiting till your phone's dead to charge it basically. And then going, Oh, I've only got 10 minutes to charge it before I, you know, before charge myself before I have to go do this. It's you're, you're just running on empty and that's just not going to work out again. Most of these are great tips for all the time, you know, cause like that is important too. You know, to uh, still do what, you know, like to tuck in some fun with all the other stuff. Because, you know, like this time of year, because of all the stress and whatnot, it's really easy for some people. You can look at them and go, how is this enjoyable to you at all? Like all I'm seeing is stress and like, you know, tension. So, you know, being able to take a step back and doing some of these things, you know, so that you can actually enjoy what's going on and, you know. Mm-hmm. Good call. Uh, where are we at? Number nine. Yep. Uh, number nine is set a comfortable gift or, or comfortable budget for gifts. That's absolutely that is so important. It is. That is so important. I've I've heard some stuff with people getting just out of hand, you know, with some of it. And nobody ever, ever wants you to be in. And financial issues, shall we say, mm. over a gift for them. Eh, I don't know. And it depends on do, what the gift is. No. <laughs> <laughs> if they do, you should not be buying them gifts. Yeah, that's probably true. You know? Yeah. And my, my father came to me this year and he's like, you know, going forward, I'm not going to be able to do birthday gifts anymore. Um, because financial situations mm-hmm. and I looked and I'm like, dad, that's fine. That's no worries. No problems. Yeah. You know, and like you can just double up at Christmas. Really yeah. how I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <it's okay. laughs> but that's how, I, you know, the Christmas gifts have gotten smaller since he's retired. Sure. 
gee, go yeah. figure. You know, this is yeah. not this is not a big surprise. And nor do my brother and I or my husband do we care. Yeah. You know, it's wonderful that he thinks of us and, and wants to give us things, you know. Yeah. But like I've told him, I said, you have invested plenty in us over the years. Well, you know, no, that's not even a, a blink on the radar right. of importance. You know, it just, yeah. no. Yeah. And anyone who, if I found that someone in my life put themselves in a financial hardship because they had to buy me a specific gift that I asked for, mm -hmm. I would be so upset by the whole situation that it would... It would just ruin every good part of it, you yeah. know? Yeah, because uh, you can look at that gift and then that <laughs> can pop into your head it, every time, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. like, no, nobody wants that. Yeah. So don't be responsible and reasonable, and especially with your children. And teach your children the importance of gifts and not the value of the gift, but the importance of the gift. You know, there's an old proverb or I can't remember where it comes from, but there's an old story. Let's call it a story. An old story <laughs> about um, a little old lady at church and they're passing the offering plate around and the guy next to her puts a 20 in and she reaches in her purse and she puts in a dollar and they pass the plate around and stuff. And uh, that to bring attention to specific people or anything, but the the priest saw what was going, you know, saw that happen and stuff. And he was talking with the congregation, and he's like, "What's what's the larger value? The twenty dollar bill that someone puts in when they have three other twenty dollar bills in their wallet, or the dollar that someone puts in when that's the only dollar that they have? You know, what's the higher value?" Yeah. It's going to be that dollar, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's how we need to look at gifts. Gifts are giving from ourselves to others. Yeah. It's not to put yourself in hardship over it, but it is to give something that of yourself to someone else. And that's what we need to make sure that we're teaching children. Yeah. The value of things is very important, obviously, because we want to make sure that you understand how hard you have to work to get something. But on the flip side, you know, don't overindulge. Yeah. Well, there's other things, too, is like I see like my um, uh, my one nephew, he's he's got so many people that buy for him. That, mm -hmm. you know, by the end of Christmas, it's like you, you could throw away all the toys in his room and, you know, and then replace them with these. It's like it, that's too much. Nobody needs that much stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like people should like rein it in or go together maybe to buy a gift or something. You know, it's like you don't need all this or better yet, you know, start a, a savings fund toward college or some, you know, thing like that or something. You know, it's just. Well, one, uh, one thing that my. um that uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law have done for their nieces is they will t give you uh, a list of, of, you know, toys and whatnot, but they'll also include on there their gymnastics and all the different activities that they do. Yeah. So you can either get gift certificates for the places where they do their activities or you can um, pay in advance so on their oh, lessons. Okay. Okay. So they take gymnastics lessons, dance lessons and stuff like that. So it's a, you know, that's really smart. It's something that they love to do. That's the, yeah. that's the parents getting a gift for themselves and their kid. That's really smart. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't mean that to be a jerk. It's just, it's yeah. the truth because they don't have but to pay for it and the kid still gets the class. So yeah. it's win for everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so the kids aren't getting extra stuff that they don't need, mm -hmm. but they're getting what they love to do. Yeah. So that's the you part know, I can never understand is when I, I see that stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. Growing up, I got, I got quite a bit of stuff because, you know, essentially, mm -hmm. I mean, my parents each had other kids, but, I, you know, essentially I was an only child. Um, you know, I had a brother that was five years older that lived with us, but it was him and I didn't live in the same house for very long. So, you know, I, 
I got, you know, I, I got to reap the benefits of that, you know, and, uh, you know, but, but growing up, I was still taught, you know, you don't expect gifts from anybody. If they give you something, you appreciate it, you know, like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying with your dad, you know, my grandma, um, used to buy gifts for me when I was a kid. And as I got older, she's like, you know, now look, she's like, you know, for a while she was like, when I was working into Hollywood video, I had to wear, you know, black, basically like Dockers type pants. And, uh, she would just for Christmas, she'd buy me a new pair of pants because she knew I needed them for work because, you know, up and down all the time, the knees start wearing in them. And then, you know, I, I can't wear them to work anymore. Um, but at one point, when I was over there, she's like, I'm not going to be able to do that anymore because my pension, you know, like a, a while ago, you know, uh, her pension got cut and a couple other things. And she's like, you know, money's a lot tighter. And I was like, that's fine. I don't care. You know, I'm like, I appreciate that you did it. You don't have to buy me anything. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like that's who I am. No one has to buy me anything. I appreciate stuff when people buy stuff for me. I appreciate that they thought of me. If you go mm -hmm. back and listen to the beginning of the show when I was talking about that thing I got from the Secret Santa – what was the, one of the things I talked about? I talked about my gratitude that they thought of me to, to do something that was above and beyond what, you know, like I said, the only requirement was to just do something. That's it. You know, that, that's the requirement that was put on it. What everyone else does is totally up to them. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so that, that's very important to learn and to teach people and, the other side of this is if you have a family or something that they're like, oh, let's spend $50 a person. And you're like, whoa, I can't yeah, do that. Exactly. You know, tell them and say, look, yeah. I can't do that. I'm going to do what I can, you know, within my means here. Don't let someone yeah. else set your budget. You yeah, set be your honest. Budget. I think that's the key with also all of that. this yep. mm -hmm. is, is I appreciate the honesty <laughs> and, and I need to be honest when it's something I can't do. Don't get talked into it. Yep. You know, it's, it comes back to just, you know, wanting to be a people pleaser for me. Yep. You know, I don't want to rock the boat. I want, you know, I don't want to, no, it's, it's, there are points where you need to speak up for yourself. Yeah. And then, um, and on the other hand is when somebody is honest is, is to say, thank you. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the thing too, is it's like, you know, if, if uh, <clears throat> the one year at work, um, we were doing a, a gift exchange kind of thing. You know, it was a not Secret Santa, but basically, you know, you draw a name, and so it's basically Secret Santa. Um, but we didn't keep it secret, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. And somebody was like, "Well, let's set the budget at thirty bucks," and I'm like, "Yeah, let's." You know, I'm like, I don't really have much money. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I want gifts for other people, like you know, my mom and dad, and you know. So I was like, I don't really have a lot to spend. I, I'm like, can we keep it closer to 20? You know, and most of the people that I worked with were like, you know, they were like one. I remember one guy actually going, I'm glad someone said something, you know, <laughs> and uh, other nice. people, were, you know, and it's only, and I know you look at it and you go, oh, it's only 10 bucks. It's like, yeah, but when you don't have that 10 bucks, yeah. then you feel like a heel because you didn't, you didn't meet what everyone else is like. You're getting a $30 gift, but you're only giving a $20 gift, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, that's why, honestly, a lot of the times when uh, we'd have those gift exchanges, I would spend whatever the amount of money was. That way no one could say that, oh, he, you know, like if the cap is 20 bucks or whatever, you know, I'm I'm not coming in at like, oh, here's your uh, dollar store gift, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I got receipts. If you want to see, I spent $20 on you. <laughs> no one's calling me cheap. Um, but at the same time, you know, when it got to where I was uncomfortable with, with the amount, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm good. Yeah. So that's a great point about the people pleasing too, Heno, cause that you're right. That's totally what that's about. Absolutely. Staying quiet just so everybody else will be happy there. I mean, even if you bring it up and everybody else is like, no, nah, <laughs> you know, you can still be like, that's fine, but I'm only spending this much. Like I'm not doing yeah. that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and anybody, and, and uh, great opportunity to find out if you're uh, hanging out with the right people. 
Yeah. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. If, if they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. It's totally cool. You know, or if they, you know, it's like, all right, yeah. thank you. You just told me everything I need to know about y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny because um, I remember my family did, uh, you know, a secret Santa thing the one year. And they set the the amount at like thirty five or something like that, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna spend twenty five. I'm like, whoever has me, you can spend twenty five on me, like so mm-hmm. no one can gripe. Fair oh enough. well, he got a more expensive. You spend the same amount on me, you know." And and I yep. was like, "Cause that's what I'm comfortable spending at the moment." So, like I said, just you just got to speak up sometimes and uh, and just stand firm, you know. I mean, it's different if you're talking a matter of something you can do and you're just cheap. You know, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's another, you know, but always, you know, like it, like it says, you know, don't, uh, set a, a comfortable budget, you know, don't mm-hmm. make it to where after Christmas, you know, you get a credit card bill and you're like, Ooh boy, you know, and then you're, right. you're spending six months working overtime to try to pay it off. So, yeah. Uh, the next one here is <clears throat> enjoy the holiday treats. Uh, the, the comment here is I proactively take steps to ensure I'm eating healthy foods, but understand that I will not be perfect when it comes to my diet, especially over the holidays. And that is okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And there, I, there's so many people I see doing this to the, the beat themselves up through the holidays and stuff. And it's like, look, these things are everybody, it, it, you know, sees these as essentially a time of decadence. Essentially, you know, mm-hmm. we're, we're going to, you know, eat more than we should. We're going to have more cookies or pies or desserts of some sort. You know, it's like, I just, just let yourself off the hook. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some people that this might send down, you know, a bad, you know, path or something. If you're one of those people, obviously do what you have to do, you know, <laughs> right? but you know, try not to beat yourself up because you, you know, you had three rolls at dinner, you know? And you've been going curb free, you know, <laughs> like just, <laughs> Hey, tomorrow's another day. I'll get after it tomorrow, you know, whatever. <laughs> so. And yeah, then, that was t- today when I got to work, I saw all the candies are showing up from all of our owners and you know, the table was full of stuff and it's like, right. the, we always get the big C's candy oh, box yeah. that has everything in it. And oh, it's yeah. just like, I'm eating a lot of peanut brittle. <laughs> Yeah, there That's you go. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. all there is to it, and I'm going to enjoy every bite. <laughs> every year, you know, when, when my family gets together, you know, there's always, uh, you know, there's always stuff like, you know, pies and cookies and get little candy set out and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And every year I'm just like, I'm going to be good this year. I'm not going to have all that stuff. Like if I'm going to eat more, there's always a veggie tray. It's like hit the veggie tray or have a little more ham or something like that, you know. And every year I'm just like, on my 10th cookie, like, I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, whatever. I just, I have no business eating that stuff, but it's the idea that I'm also not gonna, it's stuff, sometimes it's stuff, like Thanksgiving. I mm. love pumpkin pie. The only time pumpkin pie is really good is that time of year, you know, especially if it's made from fresh pumpkin and all that stuff. It's like, I, I, you know, I'm not, I don't like buying frozen ones or that kind of stuff because they never, they're seasoned weird or whatever. But it's the idea that I, knowing that it's only around this time of year, I tend to eat more of it, you know. Um, whereas the rest of the year, I'll be like, well, I, you know, be like, man, I haven't had pumpkin pie since last November, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, but I, I don't kill myself over the, uh, sorry, that's bad wording. I'm, I don't beat myself up over the idea of, you know, not, you know, oh man, I had too much pie, whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's another day. Yeah. So Turn the page. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's similar to going on vacation. You know, a lot of people, yeah. it's like, I'm on vacation. I'm going to eat what I want, do whatever. I'm not going to worry about it. when I get back home. Then, you know, it's back to normal. And I think it's kind of, to me, it's this kind of same way, you know, just mm-hmm. give yourself a bit of a pass. I mean, you know. Yep. Or maybe if you want to still have boundaries, just loosen the boundaries up a little bit, you know, like, all right, I'm going to have a couple cookies. I'm not going to have 10, but I'm going to have two, <laughs> <laughs> which will turn into and, and, and it just, it's just ties into that idea of like the minute you start, uh, you know, restricting yourself to the point of 
you know that you're not happy about that you're doing it, the more likely you are to binge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and if you just allow yourself some some joy, you allow yourself a little 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 fun, mm. you're you're more likely to keep things in moderation. Right. Very true. Yeah. Let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the last one on here is schedule some alone time if it all becomes too much. And, you know, very important. Actually, the comment here I really like it's with so many people around the house and stores filled with people, I find it helpful to make sure I take some time to myself. This is not about being selfish, but being okay saying that I deserve some me time too. That last line is very, very, very good. Because it isn't about being selfish. It's about, like, or even if you want to see it, say it is selfish, it's good selfish. Because it's, I need to recharge. It's self-care. Yeah, exactly. Yep. yep. <clears throat> All about the self-care. Yeah, and, you know, very, very important. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the list. Good list. That's awesome. Yeah, that was a really good list. Good conversations. So, well, I don't know. What do you guys think? Are we good? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Awesome. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> All right, folks, you know the drill. You want to continue the conversation with us, you can reach out to me on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. You can also shoot us an email at the Crazy Life Podcast at outlook.com or shoot us a message through our website at the crazy life podcast.weebly.com. And you, Hanno, how can they reach you? You can find me on Twitter at Ida Hanno. You can find me on Facebook, Hanno Hater. And you can find me taking a few days off in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, you can also find the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Um, you can find, uh, also find the show on Twitter at the crazy life pod where I post when new episodes go up. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you'd like to at Stunami. Uh, my other podcast is at salty underscore language or at salty language.com. And that show is not safe for work. Um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We are part of the tangent bound network, which can be found at tangent So please go give them a, uh, a, uh, look and uh, listen. You may find some podcasts to add to your uh, uh, listening rotation. Unless you're like me and have no business adding more. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, if you're using iTunes, uh, please rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, that helps us uh, be more visible in searches and what have you. And uh, if you're using Stitcher or a different podcast app, please use the like or share buttons uh, for the same reason. They help us uh, become more visible to where maybe we'll get more listeners. Uh, or, you know, uh, share share our uh, Twitter posts or our Facebook posts so that maybe, you know, your friends will see a topic we talk about and be interested in it and, uh, you know, come aboard. Um, the next part is, uh, we're not doctors, therapists, or trained professionals. We're just three people sharing our opinions and experiences. As I said earlier in the show, and we've all said pretty much throughout the show, <laughs> if you need help, please seek help. Um, even, even if it's just for a couple weeks or whatever, you know, please reach out to somebody if you need help. Um, you know. If you know this time of year is tough for you, tell people that are around you, you know, tell your family, tell your friends so that, you know, maybe that, you know, that just mention to them, just be like, Hey, you know, maybe check on, in on me once in a while, you know, cause this is a tough time of year. Um, and if you have friends that are, uh, you know, that suffer from uh, mental illness or depression or, you know, even, you know, whatever it is, uh, uh, you know, or again, if they, you know, lost somebody recently or around this time of year, those kind of things, just reach out to them and, you know, make sure they're okay. Um, and, uh, I guess the last part then is, um, if you, if you feel as though you may harm yourself or others, uh, definitely reach out to somebody, uh, in your support system, uh, or, you know, call 911, uh, go to a hospital, tell them you're having a mental health crisis, 
Um, just b- please uh, try not to be alone and try to get the help that you need at that point. You know, there's uh, suicide prevention hotline numbers that are out there. Those are over on our uh, Facebook page in the notes section. Or you can just Google, you know, suicide prevention hotline number. Um, so, uh, you know, make sure you, you do that kind of thing. Even if you find yourself uh, planning how you would do it or um, just writing suicide notes or whatever, that kind of thing, um, immediately contact, you know, your doctor or, um, you know, if you're already in therapy or with a, a psychiatrist, you know, whatever, you know, contact them and let them know so that they can, you know, help you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the last thing is I've already kind of said a few times on the show is reach out to somebody, you know, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people are in the mood to do that this kind of year, time of year anyway. Because, you know, it's of the the warm feeling a lot of us get this time of year or whatever. But, um, you know, reach out to somebody and just do what you can. You know, ask them if they need anything. Tell them you love them, you appreciate them, whatever it is. You know, or uh, if you don't have anybody to do that kind of stuff with, you know, there's always, you know, there's always places that could use help, uh, you know, uh, volunteer somewhere, maybe help out. Absolutely. With that, everyone, keep breathing, uh, have a, a good week, and share the love, not the stress. <laughs>